talked about this a little bit before when we were comparing skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle and uh, smooth muscle. <clears throat> so your cardiac muscle cells are shorter, they're not long and cylinder. They're shorter, they're branched. <clears throat> the big thing here, one of the big things is that there are no terminal cisterna. So cardiac muscle cells are very much affected by and dependent on extracellular calcium levels. Cardiac muscle cells do not do anaerobic metabolism very well. If you cut off the blood supply, heart muscle dies. And since cardiac muscle cells are not attached to bone, they're attached to each other, again, by these interpolated discs, these very, very protein-rich connections because they essentially pull on each other. And so here in this picture, you can see that's, that's where an interpolated disc would be. So this is a cardiac muscle cell over here. There's the nucleus. There's another one over there. There's its nucleus. And if you use an electron micrograph, um, you can see here's the interpolated disc. And then right here, in between this cell and that cell, is an area where you would have gap junctions. And so the desmosomes are these basically protein rivets that rivet one cardiac muscle cell to the next. And then these gap junctions allow ions, they're basically ion channels, that allow ions to move from one cell to the next. Now, remember that cardiac muscle cells do not have to have a signal from the nervous system. Cardiac muscle cells are autorhythmic. They, they possess autorhythmicity. Now, when you look at the cardiac muscle cells, there's actually two broad categories. Most of the cardiac muscle cells are what we refer to as contractile cells. Their job is to contract, to pump the blood. But there's 1% that are actually a little bit specialized. They're called the autorhythmic cells. The autorhythmic cells basically control or stimulate the contractile cells. And then if you're just talking about those autorhythmic cells, you've got two types of those. You've got the nodal cells and the conducting cells. The job of the nodal cells is to set the rhythm, to set the basic heart rhythm. The conducting cells are to spread this electrical signal, this action potential that's basically generated here. These cells spread it to the rest of these cells. <coughs> so let's talk about the autorhythmic cells and how they work. The cardiac conduction system, how the electrical signal, the action potential gets spread throughout the heart, basically has five, form, five parts. The sinoatrium, now remember, these cells, these cells that we're talking about here, these are the um, autorhythmic cells. They're the 1%. So you've got the, the AV, excuse me, the SA node or sinoatrial node, the AV node, the AV bundle, the bundle branches, and the Purkinje fibers. These are not the contractile cells. Okay, the SA node, the sinoatrial node is right up here. That is essentially the pacemaker for the heart. And the reason that the SA node is the pacemaker for the heart is because it spontaneously depolarizes faster than, the, than everything else. Then it depolarizes faster than all of these cells that are in these areas and the contractile cells. A contractile cell, you just take a cell out of the left ventricle, it will contract on its own on its own, but it's too slow to stimulate the, if the, if that was the pacemaker, the heart would not be fast enough to sustain life. So what normally happens is the SA node, the cells of the SA node generate a signal. <coughs> that signal passes through these intranodal pathways to the AV node, the atrial ventricular node, between the atrium and the ventricles. Then the signal passes down through the AV bundle, it splits into the bundle branches, and then the Purkinje fibers take it up the lateral side uh, of each ventricle. Okay? And so what happens is, when the signal is moving from here to here, the atria contract. And then once the signal comes down through the middle and starts up the side, the ventricles contract. And remember, you've got that fibrous skeleton right here. And so right here, this is the only electrical connection between the atria and the ventricles. But basically between the AV node, that AV bundle right there, as the signal passes from the AV node to the AV bundle, that's when it's going from basically the top of the heart to the bottom of the heart. 
And this allows the atria to contract first and then the ventricles The signal essentially slows down. So just a reminder, we've got most of your cells are contractile cells. You have the autorhythmic cells that, the, that we call autorhythmic. They're all technically autorhythmic, but functionally speaking, these cells and then these cells, basically the auto, the, I hate that term. I don't like that term because they're all autorhythmic. <clears throat> but the technical autorhythmic cells, okay, are these, and that's what we're talking about. Not these yet, these. So your nodal cells, that's the cells of the SA node and the AB node. And then the conducting cells are the AB bundle, bundle branches, and Purkinje, of course. All right, the SA node, uh, like I said, it's the pacemaker. It generates, it spontaneously depolarizes. Let me, let me back up just a minute. When we were talking about skeletal muscle cells, skeletal muscle cell had a neuromuscular junction, right? And acetylcholine was released, and acetylcholine bound to its receptor, and what opened? Sodium channels. And as long as there was no signal from the, uh, the motor neuron, the sodium channel stayed closed and this muscle cell stayed unstimulated. And so we, one way to describe that is we could say that skeletal muscle cells maintain a stable membrane potential. Does that make sense? Cardiac muscle cells are leaky. They will, uh, ions will slowly leak in and once they reach that threshold, they, de they depolarize. So cardiac muscle cells cannot maintain a stable membrane potential. A little bit of sodium ions leak in all the time. They're just leaking. They're, they're more permeable to sodium ions. So sodium ions leak in. So if you let, if you let them sit there long enough, they will depolarize, and then calcium channels open and calcium goes in. And the cells of the SA node are the leakiest. So all cardiac muscle cells are leaky, but the SA node cells are the leakiest. And so they depolarize more quickly. And the rest of the cells have to listen to them. So that's why we say the SA node is the pacemaker, because those cells depolarize faster than anything else. They, they spontaneously generate their action potentials. And they do this about 70 to 80 times <laughs> or excuse me, yes, yeah, 78, 70 to 80 times a minute. And so your resting heart rate, the average resting heart rate, is somewhere between 70 and 80 beats per, per minute. Now, if something happens to your SA node, the AV node can take over. It's still a nodal cell. It still can depolarize quickly, but it's slower than the SA node. So somebody who has damage to their SA node, the AV node takes over, but their resting heart rate's gonna be lower. Now, 40 to 60 is, is fine for everyday activities, but these people are not gonna be athletes. But you can, you can survive reasonably well with this condition. If both the AV node and the SA node are damaged, that's when they have to put in a pacemaker, or if they're having arrhythmias and they've got to regulate. That's what they've got to put in the All right, from the AB node, um, the signal goes through the bundle of PS, or the AB bundle. And like I said, this is that only connection, only electrical connection between the atria and the ventricles. And then once that signal gets through that um, bundle of PS, then it quickly, very quickly, zips down the rest of the interatrial, interventricular septum, and then right up the side. So it slows down, that signal slows down a little bit here, and then it rapidly is propagated down the bundle branches and up the tension Now remember when we were talking about the structure of the heart, right, ventricle had this moderator ramp. For some reason, we don't have one on the left ventricle, and I don't know why. The idea is that this sends the signal to those papillary muscles so they can start to contract to, to hold those corti tendinii, of the, 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 the cords on the cusps of the um, tricuspid valve. I don't know why you, don't have one in the, in the left ventricle. Now, it takes about, uh, the signal, once the SA node depolarizes, it takes about 50 milliseconds for that signal to travel to the AB node. From the AB node to the AB bundle, <coughs> I was kept saying that it slows down. The AB node, those, <coughs> it slows down, so there's about 100, 
millisecond delay. All right, so how many, how many seconds is that?